we are back, everyone, and welcome to the fourth and final week of Mermaid 2023. Yes, this is the fourth installment in a series, which of course means there are three other videos preceding this one. If you feel like you're a bit lost or confused at any point in this video, go back and watch the other ones from this playlist. Now, I know that some of you are probably thinking, Jack, this isn't the final week of Mermaid. There are still five more prompts left on this list. Well, you're right. There are more illustrations left to do, but there won't be any more videos. However, there will be more lore and a conclusion to this chapter of Argyle Finch's journey in written form. So be sure to follow my Instagram to see the last five days of this month's challenge. Also, I'll be doing a Q&A stream on the final day of Mermaid next week. So if you have any further unanswered questions about the challenge, the story, my artistic process, or what my favorite species of crab is, be sure to hop in on that stream. I'll be sure to make an announcement the day of on our YouTube community page and on the Discord. And yes, today's video will conclude with the evolution of Phi Tide, and I can't wait to share it with you all. All right, I think that's enough preamble. Let's take a look at the six new illustrations for this week of Mermaid. I've known people to confuse beauty for weakness. The brutish and battle-scarred wear their ferocity like a suit of armor. Perhaps. I've learned from the fish folk that those who truly revel in the art of war can find elegance in every punch they throw, and splendor in the flash of scales that follows a well-placed strike. It's intoxicating, almost, to watch them fight. You could be deceived into believing that these ballets of brutality are as just as they are beautiful. I thought it so once. The truth is that war is ugly. It matters not the opulence of the fighters or the passion in their fists. Always there will be one, only one if they're lucky, who falls, broken and battered. His scales beaten from his body his fins torn and tattered, his once proud eyes fill with blood and his golden face turns pale. Where's the beauty in that? The most repugnant of the crown's enigmorphs lie on the sea floor. They have no desire to blend in with the world above, why would they? Theirs is a realm of pitch darkness, where mortal eyes will never glean their hideous forms. Everything settles here, eventually. Flesh, bone, light, and sounds. They all drift from above in clouds of tainted snow. She sends them to scour the muck and the decay, to gather every last scrap of knowledge that lies hidden in the mud. The ones I've seen, wrenched from the embrace of darkness and thrown onto the cold deck of my ship, there's fear in their eyes. I think a small part of them remembers what it was like before her spines pierced their minds. A simpler time, when only living another day was challenging enough. Now, death must be a long-awaited relief. Or, at least, I hope that death brings peace to these tortured souls. Know your limits, reader. There are some foes out there that simply ain't worth pursuing. In my youth, if youth you could call it, 
I found myself picking fights with men twice my size and learning nothing from the beatings they gave me. Every time I thought I could turn around and grow, become stronger, and come back to claim my revenge, ah, but it never came. The world around me became fiercer, more violent, and I shrunk into the shadows. Preservation of self should come before most, but not all. I pray that you, like I, have something or someone worth fighting for. But pick your fights wisely. Those closest to you, those whom you love and who love you back, they will never forgive you if you fall victim to your own hubris. I've never been a religious man. Those who spend their life at sea tend to cling to their faith for hope that there is some greater power watching over them. How terrifying it is to know that's really true. It might be tempting, if you are someone of devout faith, to draw comparisons between the horrors of the Enigmorphs and your own individual religion's depictions of angels or demons. Be warned. To believe such things is to spell your own doom. I will not discredit your faith. Who am I who have seen so much of the impossible to say that any form of spirituality is nothing but an elaborate lie? But do not think for a second that just because it may walk like a demon or talk like a demon, that it can be slain like one. <sighs> Too many times I've seen brave and foolish men throw their lives away to the power of the crown simply because they thought the good book gave them a way out. A silver bullet and a crucifix will do you no good here. If faith plays no part in the affairs of the Enigmorphs and the Merinin, then science is even less applicable. We live in an age of discovery, a time when people crave answers to questions that have remained a mystery for centuries. At one time, I thought my father was a man of science. I misconstrued his tireless obsessions for academic endeavors. But I will admit that I aspired to become like him in my older years. Of course, now I know better. Our infantile understanding of what we call science only serves to confuse rather than inform. Life cannot possibly exist where there is so little light, where temperatures drop below freezing, and where the weight of the water around you could flatten a steam engine. <laughs> How foolish these educated men sound to me now. Just wait until the impossible surfaces. What science could save us then? Sometimes I wonder why I still lose sleep. Safe on dry land, 
miles away from the darkness and chaos of the sea, you'd think I'd finally be able to relax. No, it's not so simple. I thought perhaps that my fears would stay below the waves, but they follow me even as I sit here and write. It's easy to believe that the greatest threats that the ocean conceals are the ones with biting teeth and black eyes. They give chase until their prey is exhausted, and they tear flesh and raw bones until there's nothing left but cloudy water. <sighs> but the real danger lies in wait, motionless and seemingly without purpose. You can swim away, flee to shore if you like, but they'll find you eventually. They drift with the tides, and wait for the inevitable ebb and flow that pulls us all to wash their prey into their thousands of venomous arms. I'm not safe on land. None of us are. She will find us all, eventually. These will be the last words you hear from Argyle Finch, but don't worry, his journal isn't finished yet. Follow my Instagram for the last few written entries in Argyle's log, and stay tuned for more stories from the world of Apocryphal. Now we get to look at Day 26's prompt, Whiptail Ray. Last week's Fakemon entry was Algae, and at the time I'm sure some of you were a bit confused as to what the correlation between Algae and a Stingray was. Well, like I said last week, the concept for this evolutionary line was thought up by a few talented artists and writers from the Project Untamed development team. The root inspiration for their design came from a phenomenon known as the Red Tide, basically a giant algal bloom that can occur under certain conditions. The idea of turning a mass of billions and billions of microscopic algae into a singular, monstrous entity was incredibly exciting to me. I wanted to make a Stingray-inspired Pokémon, but Stingray alone wasn't really an interesting enough concept. It needed something more. Turning an amorphous cloud of microorganisms into something that read as one creature would be a tough task, but combining these two concepts created a very, very cool final design. The concept art made by the dev team also included some UFO imagery, and while I admit that my design doesn't look quite as alien, I did want to include some extraterrestrial elements into the look. It made the whole thing seem creepy, intriguing if not a little bit scary. It also helps to fit in with the rest of the mermaid challenge. I think I did a pretty good job keeping the visuals of the four Fakemon I made this month consistent with the themes of my mermaid challenge overall. But you guys will have to tell me what you think. Venerage, the Red Tide Pokemon. When enough Phytide converge in one area, they merge and evolve to become Venerage. Where there were once hundreds of inconspicuous little Pokemon, now one massive Pokemon exists. They are as dangerous as they are huge, choking the life from everything unfortunate enough to share their habitat. Special Pokemon Rangers are called to shepherd these Pokemon further out to sea, where their devastation will be less dramatic. That's Venerage, the evolved form of Phi Tide. What do you guys think of this line? I love it, and I want to give another thank you to Discord users Mary, Awardfin, Spork, and Acid9000 for the idea. To wrap up our last video for the Mermaid Challenge, here are some more amazing fan-made illustrations done by you guys. Seriously, congratulations to everyone who stuck with it this long. It's an incredibly difficult challenge, but you guys are nailing it. Give yourselves a round of applause. And that's it for this week. I hope you've all enjoyed Mermaid 2023. If you're still itching for more, don't forget to stop by the Q&A stream next week. Until then, peace. I'll see you in the next video.